Welcome to Boss Radio Live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Boss Radio Live, episode two. We have the amazing, amazing S. Monique Smith with us today. I am your host, NJ, and I cannot wait to get started. It's Boss Radio Live with NJ, your three dimensional podcast. Baltimore, Maryland. I love my city. Wow. Balancing life, health, relationships, and business is hard. Come meet me today at the Spirit Fest between 12 and 4. See you there. <laughs> I want to hear what you have to say. Again, welcome to Boss Radio Live. I'm your host, NJ, and this is where he is the boss of me. We have, as I said, the amazing S. Monique Smith with us today. She is a passionate advocate for missing and exploited persons. She's an author. She's a speaker. She's a director. She's amazing. <laughs> and so we have an amazing show coming right up. But first, a little about S. Monique Smith. S. Monique Smith is a motivational speaker, author, activist, director, and philanthropist. Monique received the devastating news in her early 30s that the woman she believed was her mother was not, thus beginning her journey to discover who she really was. Monique's childhood involves serious abuse, and she has had to overcome many trials and tribulations. She worked with law enforcement and other agencies to find out her true identity. Monique authored the book, I Am the Ancestor, and is most known for her work with the Center for Missing and Exploited Children, the Felicia Barnes case, and her launch of Known as Monique First Responders to spread awareness of missing persons, minors, and adults, and provide education and resources to end child abductions. Monique continues to passionately fight for the missing, unidentified, and trafficked through her work with other grassroots organizations. Her joyful smile and infectious spirit can be seen at any event she attends. And most recently, Monique was the executive director for her documentary, The Longest Living Jane Doe, and has received the Governor's Leadership and Service Award for her tireless efforts and many accomplishments. Let's welcome S. Monique Smith. Everybody, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm, I'm like, Jesus! First of all, like, girl, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me tell you, this is why this oh is god. the boss radio with NJ. <laughs> Let me tell you. I had not um, believe how much work I have done over the year. Are you? Can I pay you for that promo? <laughs> you, I, I need that is going over. I need a website. That you know, I, I want to sit down and learn more about me. You are so funny. <laughs> well, thank you, thank oh, you, thank you. Um, first of all, I want to congratulate you 
for taking the time out really to bring awareness to so many angles that's going on in the world. And you're doing it at such a powerful time. Right now, you're asking people to talk about how to persevere with so much pain that's going on. And, and so many people are experiencing their different sets. We're talking financial, uh, things going on with COVID, you know, the unemployment right now, medical yeah. conditions, you know, the crime in our local area. I know you broadcast across the country, yeah. but right here in our local area dealing with the crime. Um, so I want to take this time to, to thank you for launching and birthing your vision and your dream of letting people free themselves and sharing their stories in hopes of helping someone else. My ultimate goal since I started back in, in the 90s um, has been to, uh, you know, uh, just to, to aspire hope, you know, mm -hmm. anywhere and everywhere I can. And your promo video, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, and, I, and that's, that's God telling me that what I asked him for, for his glory is seen. If you didn't see that, Mm -hmm. And be able to pull that together. That means that's showing me that I'm doing his work. And that's what it's about. Without he, there is no me. So yes. I, I'm grateful. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. I'm excited to have you on the show. And, and let me just start by saying uh, for those in our listening audience, I've known Monique for a few years, um, professionally, personally, just all, all, all around. And uh, one of the things that struck me about you before I even knew your story, right? This is before I knew your story, was just how joyful you were, oh. just, just how joyous you were to be around, just how magnetic your personality is and, and just how you can bring, look at, it, look at how you started out this episode, okay? <laughs> <laughs> just how you can bring a smile to, to people's face no problem. Okay. And so that is one of the things that struck me about you. Uh, and I was like, oh, she is just such a ball of energy. She is fabulous to be around. Like, I just want to be in her space because she just makes it great. And with that, then finding out your story, I was like, say what now? <laughs> uh, so for those in our listening audience who don't happen to be acquainted with your story, let's let's start there. Let's let's start right there. And, and it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so well, it is. And I'm I'm grateful to um God has chose me to do this, to be, you know, the voice of the silence. And um it's really hard. And 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 I want to start out with telling anyone that if you have a message, if you have a goal, it's your responsibility and you owe yourself. You can't wait around for people to rescue you. You can't always depend on people. And when they can't make it to rescue you, you have to be your own champion. Unfortunately, now some people have a dynamic, a dynamic support system, which is awesome, which means they will help them elevate it. But do not let it stop you from aspiring to be your best you. And that's all I wanted growing up. That's all I wanted. So I'm S. Monique Smith, and I'm very excited to be an advocate for missing children and human trafficking. You know, I tell the world that all missing children aren't dead. And that's a hard challenge because I am that child. I'm that missing child that people probably forgot about after mm -hmm. 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And I refuse to allow people to forget about the long-term missing, the cold cases. It has been a very very difficult challenge. And your topic was perfect, using your pain to fuel your passion. And if anybody is passionate about my purpose, my assignment that God has given me, it has been. Thank you for putting that flyer up because that's when the journey began. I knew well before that I had to figure out my identity because I wanted to be like a mom. Like I wanted one title, one title only. You couldn't tell me I wasn't the best kid, me mom. Uh, peace of mom, the college door mom. I, and what was I going to tell my children? What was my legacy going to be like? And I wanted to tell my story because at the end of the day, I didn't want to be uh, uh, someone else attempting to tell my children who their mother was. Mm. And that's why I used the hashtag, be that ancestor. I'm being that ancestor. 
you know, so when they say you make your ancestors proud, I, I want to do everything that I have to do along my journey so my children will be proud, regardless of, you know, what has happened to me and my circumstances. So I continue to advocate for heightened awareness for all missing and all unidentified. And it has been a struggle. And I do the works through my book. As you mentioned before, I'm the ancestor before mm -hmm. I die. I'm going to share my story and my documentary, you know, The Longest Living Jane Doe. Could you imagine? Like I'm, I'm on the National Center of Missing Exploited Children. I'm one two zero one two nine eight. A missing child, like as an adult, knocking on the door trying to get assistance. So it was always a struggle. So my my mission is to continue to spread awareness about missing children, both minors and adult, and by providing education and resources to end child abduction. And that's all the time. Like, and then for me to have my role as just it's it's my human right. I mean, to me, anyone that's uh, forcing someone else to to be another identity and, you know, definitely the abuse. We hear yeah. the stories. Um, it has definitely been a challenge. The pain is in my core because I never had anything to, to, to look towards. So, yes, I was abducted as a baby. I was both missing and unknown my entire life. And it was just strange to be that missing milk carton kid. It was a huge challenge. All, you know, the system failed me. I was abducted by a very manipulative woman. And then the system, again, I, I just helped her create these documentation without forcing her to produce that. So it was a struggle. So growing up, me wanting to, you know, further my education, go to college, you know, get a couple of degrees, you know, start businesses. It required documentation. It required that birth certificate. And it was, I never saw it. It was so devastating that everything I attempted to do failed. But I continued to try to identify the things that I could do. Well, I didn't need a birth certificate to buy a home. So I became a real estate investor. So I bought one property, wow. then I bought another property, then I bought another property and another. So my blessings came because I identified what I could do. Mm -hmm. And then applied my energy towards that. You know, I'm right now running a multi-million dollar construction company. I'm the COO of one of the largest, probably the largest underground utility company in the city of Baltimore. And it's the pain in that part was, again, I'm having to live under the radar, you know. Right. So thank goodness I have the ability to be a great catalyst, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you are. You <laughs> are. You know, I'm a cheerleader. I'm a cheerleader for everyone. I want everyone to be their best self. So, you know, again, be that ancestor. And I want to tell my story. Like, people will wait. Don't wait until the ancestors are dead. It's you. It's you now. What are, what are you doing right now, you know, to inspire the young adults, to inspire your associates, to inspire yourself? Sometimes you will have to self-motivate. When that pain is hitting those points, and all you can think of is who's going to drag you out of that bed. Yes, I had borderline depression. You know, I went through financial woes, I, single mother, four children. And I'm thinking I'm jumping out there. You know how Steve Harvey say jump. And I'm like, he ain't say nothing about no parachute. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know yeah, and I was going go without it, without it. You know, right, <laughs> go without it. it. And again, you know, I'm purchasing homes, you know, getting cars. I'm doing all these things. I'm traveling without a birth certificate. And I'm thinking no support, no mother, no father, no sister, no brother, no aunt, no uncle. No. Yeah, I had a strong core of friends, but that one that if something happens, you can move in with before children, <laughs> you know, it was very difficult. So I've cried many a nights. Um, I, I just think of how can I continue to work to better myself and what can I do to help other people along the journey? That's my mission here. I wasn't, you know, blessed to be the little girl who grandmother showed her how to make cupcakes and she grew up and had a storefront ba bakery. But for right. you to be able to get on the other side of adversity. And I don't know anyone who's listening to this show. You cannot tell me that you have not had a door shut in your face, mm -hmm. a brick dropped on your dreams, maybe a health issue. At the end of the day, try again. It, it, uh, if at first you don't succeed, I think Charles Hicksman said that. What did he say? Try, try again. Yeah. And I continue to do that. I had to use crayons, markers, and my imagination as a child. 
because I knew the sexual abuse and the pain that I was enduring, it wasn't supposed to be for me. I saw my neighbors, classmates, all of my friends, parents teaching them childhood activities like riding a bike, roller skating, you know, jump rope. And I'm like, what about what about me? So I created these things. So things that were around me. And again, that was a blessing from the creator that he gave me that self inner spirit, that energy, you know, just to be able to be that creative, use whatever I had in my hands to, to make something of myself. And I've been just really just um, blessed to do that. You mentioned even before about the governor's award. I'm so grateful because that's the advocacy work for me to be recognized, someone to stand and say, you know what, this young lady is boots on the ground. She's out here helping these children, the runaways, the, the, the um, drug abusers, homeless shelters, every bit, not 10%, not 5%, 100%. Remember, I run a construction company, so I'm okay on that side. But when it came to how could I build funds and resources? So if I told my story, put it in a book, do it in a documentary, all the proceeds, all the proceeds. And I didn't give it to the large companies. I look for my close friends to come advocate with me, do care packets, hint, hint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. and as you mentioned before, I remember plenty of you those. Know, yeah. Plenty of those. And I thank you. I'm, I'm so humble. You and I, we go back, like you said before, before the wo the woman of women in power. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at that yeah. sisterhood. Look at that. Yeah. And we're still, we still birthing <laughs> dreams. Check it out. <laughs> Isn't that good? Isn't that, that, that good? That is a, a blessing. And I, I think of, let's talk a little bit about the book. So, uh, for you guys who don't know, who may have been living under a rock, I shouldn't say that, but maybe. <laughs> her uh, her book is called I Am the Ancestor. And, and, and the book, the best way I can say it is you use the book as a complete uh, catalyst. Yeah. So yeah. you wrote the book. The story yeah. in the book was wow when i when yeah. i read it brought me to tears yeah. but you. you use that to launch a whole lot of initiatives mm -hmm. um some of them i mentioned in your you know in the intro which is the huge one was the the cam first responders of course yeah. um but you you use that to kind of launch you off into a whole bunch of different ways that you advocated um, and, and for missing and exploited children and and like you said, the giving back and and that's just amazing. So tell me, I guess how that uh, evolved or happened. Was that the plan from the beginning or did what happened to, to you know it, it definitely was like yes, mm -hmm. it it definitely was um the plan from the beginning. I asked God because I felt that if I was the only one that knew this story, and, and I had to discover it. I had to dig. I had to find out about what happened to me. No one volunteered. No one told me. And some people knew. They were role players. They knew. So the book was birthed because, yeah, I could have told my four children that when I die, there won't be a begin date of my, you'll, there'll only be an end. There's no passport. We can't do anything. with me. So I, me telling them, I could have just put it in a lockbox. But no, why would I deprive my children of telling them a, a valuable story that will be instilled to them to grow. And that's what we all do as ancestors. I couldn't tell the story of great, great, great grandmother worked in a white house, or, you know, we have family in, in Texas and land in California. I had nothing but my truth. And if I had to bear all, like you said, in the book, it exposed a lot of what our children are going through. Just like the color of purple when Oprah, I mean, uh, Seely said, uh, a girl child just stays safe in a house full of men. And unfortunately, <laughs> I was one of those victims. Mm. But because of that, mm. uh, I refused to have this knowledge and not put it to use. Thus birthed the Nanonis Mooney campaigns, all of the initiatives. And yeah, they appear to be all over the place. But when you think about what happens in a home, one piece could actually tap into another. So you talk about sexual abuse, which is child abuse physical abuse, mental abuse, mental health. We're talking about that right now. You know, child abduction, human trafficking, false identity, 
you know, so I I was all over the place. Like you said, you mean people say, Monique, slow down. Like go down your timeline, girl. I can't keep up. But I wanted to make sure that I used my voice where I could. Know my audience isn't everywhere. And it's it's not everyone. But because now you're seeing more of these tragedies happening, it was just in my spirit that I had to use the book to tell the story. And then after years of trying, I still couldn't find my family. Decades, too. I said, what else can I do? And I said, let me get this face. I got to get this face so somebody can say, oh, my God, I recognize her. Like, you know, how could I do it? And I was writing Oprah, Sally, Jerry, Jenny, you know, you name it. I was writing producers, thousands of dollars. And then I was hiring the PRs and the teams. We said, oh, you need to work with this person, work with that person. So thus, Bert, the compliment of the movie I made, I before I die, I'm going to share my story, is the longest living Jane Doe. And that actually helped me then catapult one more time. And then you're just like, well, who pushes some pain out? Because that means I had to go live with the of you. I had to do it. And it's really, you know, it's it was uh, independently done. I had some local um, artists here that had an amazing film crew, Black Nerds, that they're, mm-hmm. they're out there. Thank you, guys. Kudos to you. And it allowed me. We launched here in Maryland in theaters. We traveled to New York, Virginia, upper parts of Maryland. And DC. So until COVID hit, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So now that the world is slowly opening up. But thank you for bringing that up because again, I used my pain and I converted it into a passion strong enough that it would not suppress the pain. Oh, I remember it. Gee, the scars. I remember that. But be able to use it purposefully. Yeah. That was the that was the key. Great way to yeah. Great way to put that it. That was the key. Yeah. 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 Couldn't wallow in self-pity. Yeah. And, and I have never seen anyone do that better than you. I mean, I'm, I'm just being <laughs> honest. I've never. Uh, and so I'm just, you know, I'm super in awe of you, Monique. I mean, that's just, mm-hmm. that's just the way I feel. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, you come up with these initiatives and you do all of this and I mean, it's even, you know, more things that are, are coming forth. But um, tell me, I guess, what has transpired since the the release of the, like, in this COVID kind of atmosphere, which you just touched on? What are the ways that you're still reaching out? Because I know you were talking to the school system. You were you were doing like you said the um, events um, and partnering with the organizations to do different um, uh, and you can even name them. I didn't know whether you wanted to name them or not, but oh, yeah, you can even right. name them as well. Yeah. Um, the organizations that you've partnered with and the things that you have been doing with them. So I know that that well you can talk a little bit about that, but then also how have you been adapting in COVID? which I still see your timeline is blown up. So I know. Yeah. You <laughs> well, you know, we're very careful with COVID and our goal and our mission is to continue to reach people. Um, yes, we have um, bags of love, bags of love, put, you know, purses together with care packets and toiletries. We go out in the evenings and we hand them out to young lady and young men, uh, which is really key. Hugs Don't Shoot with Val Jenkins. She mm-hmm. is dynamic. As a matter of fact, she was our first recipient of a thousand dollar check of, of 2021 for the amount of work that she does. She embraced the campaign because her mission is to spread love and hope one hug at a time across Baltimore. But what I was sharing with her is they were embracing children and parents, you're not getting consent. So when you don't hug, you, you, meet, you know, children are friendly, but you're teaching them, you know, unbeknownst to yourself, uh, accepting a stranger. You know, and that's an attempt wow. to groom. She took that and revamped her entire process and started sharing it on the platform. So for her to talk about love and then preventative and protection mm-hmm. and letting parents know, like, you just let a total stranger hug your child, you know, and that's wow. a conversation, you know. So it goes from each organization that I partner with. And then, you know, we share. This is a, a collaboration where we, we work together and boost on the ground. Now, here's the deal. I know she has well over a hundred and she calls them hug dealers. <laughs> Boots on the ground. So because she knows about my mission, any event that a child goes missing, 
and we actually want to support a family with a search team, we're concerned citizens. You don't need to be an organization. You don't have to have this huge nonprofit. We're concerned citizens when the FBI or the National Center for Supported Children throw out an Amber Alert and they need additional support. They do what? Call out to the public. So this is an opportunity for people to already know how to get involved, be prepared to get involved. That is the key. So I'm so grateful that you mentioned that because uh, just just that's the additional advocates. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm turning people into instant advocates. Like just by telling my story, parents are saying the way I, I watch my child now I, is I look I look more. I, I dig deep into their cell phones. I make sure that they're you know not sending inappropriate pictures. I mean, it, the mm-hmm. platform has grown. So I'm very very. I'm very grateful for all of the partnerships and all of the alliances that I have. A couple of new shelters that are coming out. They've reached out to me to help, you know, partner with them. And I'm excited about that because when victims are rescued, it's a difficult process for them to be able to transition back into normalcy. So for Mm -hmm. them to have shelters, care packets, and the, the whole little support network is what we're trying to do. And I'm grateful. So as I share my story, um, even to organizations, uh, schools, businesses, me creating those new advocates is key. It's spreading brand new awareness. And I'm grateful. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So let me just ask a, a question because you mentioned businesses and, and um, a whole lot of my audience will be small business owners. You know, we're small business owners. Mm-hmm. Um, and so how can businesses help or contribute to this? Because this is a problem that's much larger than people probably realize or pay attention to. I don't think it was really until I started um, talking with you and seeing all the initiatives that you were doing that I realized, you know, wow, sexual trafficking is, is, is in Maryland. It's in Baltimore. Like, you know, people think of it as this, you know, uh, problem. Don't, don't go out of the country uh, and talk to strangers. Or, you know, we see, we've seen the movie Taken, and, you know, yeah, things really like that. <laughs> and so, you know, that is the idea I think we have of, of human trafficking and, and child abduction. And there are several, and I think I've even heard you talk about this when you've been on other platforms, that there are several reasons why a child could be abducted. Um, It's not always just um, sexual. It's, you know, it may be a whole, and that's like the human trafficking piece, but it may be other reasons um, that a child could even be abducted. And so Mm -hmm. it's here, it's in Baltimore, it's in Maryland, it's in wherever you all are watching this from, it's there. And so how can businesses uh, help or be involved? And then I want you to talk a little bit. You mentioned the role players. So I think that's huge too. And I, I think that can tie in with businesses, but I'm going to let you talk. Oh about yeah. That. All, all, every platform known, every, I don't care if it's a school, um, a, a university, a business, um, a nonprofit organization, it's called social responsibility. There's actually fields. I didn't even realize how much money people make in the industry. And it's called social responsibility. And each entity can actually take on a class, a workshop, Homeland Security. I always lead people to their websites. They have representatives that will come out. The same thing with Black and Missing, the same thing with the National Center Mixes for the Children. It's easy for people really to just get involved. The simplest way, I think the quickest, easiest way are hotline numbers. I always talk about hotline, the 1-800-RUNAWAY. Put it in your phone. If you're listening to me right now, plug that, lock it in. So if you have something where you can support, where you see something, you don't have to Google the number and figure it out. It's 1-800-RUNAWAY. The same Mm -hmm. thing with human trafficking, 1-888-3737-888-1-888- 3730, you'll become an instant advocate because then you'll start talking about it. As soon as you see human trafficking, you will have a conversation saying, you know what? I remember hearing this lady's story and I locked that number down. So if I see something, I'm going to save someone. And you see how I changed that from see something, say something? Because a lot of times people may say something, but it isn't to the proper individuals. You may go to work and see something and say something and say, you know, 
I saw my neighbor, you know, snatch this girl up and she had marks around her arms, you know, and I never saw before. And he pushed her through the basement. Okay, see something? Right now, we've been inundated with so many resources, tips, yeah. statistics, leads, where we can see something, save someone. Challenge yourself before you're educated yourself about these tragic things. Now you're at a stage where you're going to equip yourself and be prepared to act. You know, practice if you have to, to say, you know what, if I see something, I'm going to hit 911. I'm going to call the authorities. I'm going to hit the 1-800 number. That's how people can get involved. Inexpensive, you know, relatively very, very easy. And the last thing is talking is free. If you're driving with your young adults, you see a billboard about a missing child, you see another commercial, maybe if you're home and you see something about human trafficking, ask them. They may know more than, than you know. Right now, with social media, the new predator is your cell phone, your desktop, your, your devices. There, it's no longer always that big van. And this is what I talk about in the advocacy work, why I push the book why I pushed the movie, why I get the proceeds, and why I donated to these organizations to keep the message out there and to go. It, it's just, it's always working. It's, it's very easy to do. Yeah. 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 And, and I, don't, I don't know what you were talking about when you were talking about being scattered in any form or fashion. I think I have said this. <laughs> I think I've said this to you before. There is total synergy in everything you do. Thank you. Thank so you. I, I've never thought otherwise um, because it just everything kind of works hand in hand. And it's the total picture is us educating ourselves, yes. um, knowing what's happening around us, being aware. Yes. And, you know, they say don't sleep. Be be awake. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So, Thank you yeah. for that because I'm at the stage I was right now is I'm I'm on the other side of adversity. I was the the child that was silent and no one would listen to me when I was trying to tell them about my abuse, the sexual physical abuse. Now I'm making up for it. Now you're going to hear me, and I'm using the story I told people. So how can I make an impact? How can I really, really seriously? make an impact. For the days that I was silenced, I'm going to use my voice for those other victims that have been. Yeah. And, and I'd like for you to talk a little bit about um, this, the social experience. Let me just show that. Um, <laughs> because it, we talked about the, the ways that people can become advocates, even if you're in a business, because there was, I think, a Facebook post and I just saw where um, a, a couple was in like a restaurant and it wasn't that that she was abducted but it was that she was abused but it could easily be an an abducted person or child somebody yeah. being f forced to go with someone else um with the way that these people were acting in a restaurant and the the staff got involved yes and and rescued her basically and so, you know, we we definitely need to look out for those opportunities. But there's another opportunity that people can can uh, take to get involved as well. So yes, yes, we've taken we've taken the book club to the next level. So generally, what happens is uh, you have about 20, 30 people that participate in a monthly book club. They purchase the book, they read the book, and then they meet up and they have a discussion you know, questions or what perspectives, what insights that each person got. Um, and that's how they fuel their process with, um, with, their, with their book club. What I offer is the same exact process, but you get to view the movie. The social experiences because you're socially engaging. So as you're reading the book, you watch the documentary. We can schedule it however you prefer. Um, and then we do the Q&A. And generally I bring tips and or resources. Now in the back of the book, there are a plethora of resources in the back of the book. So during the mm -hmm. Q&A, I also share. I try to cater it to more of when people say, well, what do I do? What do I do? And I, I challenge them with that. If you lean more towards human trafficking, then you want to become the subject matter expert on human trafficking. If you want to do child abduction, you educate yourself with those resources, and then I'll be able to provide it that way. And that's where additional funds are generated to help support the campaigns that we have. And that's oh, on 
Facebook. So the social experience is on Instagram and it's on Facebook. And you can reach out to us there if you're interested in buying the book, books in bulk and then having an opportunity to screen the movie. Unfortunately, because of COVID, <laughs> the movie has not been in theaters. We're trying to get that, you know, back out there into the universe again. And I'm excited. But let me give you another, like an exclusive. Yay, an exclusive. Okay. Because of the amount of work that I've done in the last 20 years, and I've been with, uh, you know, the National Center of for the Children, the state police, the local police, you know, the NamUs organizations, Ancestors.com, you know, Missing Persons International. I have had my story pulled to be used for a documentary with HBO. And they're going to do it. <laughs> And HBO oh, uh, wow. so they actually That's they did a phenomenal job. The filming team came in and they interviewed um and me and DC, uh one of the connecting uh, relatives through ancestors.com. They were just shocked about, you know, this woman was looking for her baby sister for over 50 years. So they flew the crew in, got the Airbnb during COVID to capture her story. Um, so that was DC, New York. And then they flew back to Maryland, separate filming crew to come in, um, do a full interview with the detective that was working on my case. So they can actually help me get this story of hope. Don't wow. give up on your dreams. Take, like you said, that, that turn that pain that and have a passion for your purpose and just build on it. And that's the reward. My reward is that I didn't let this crush me. And I can openly tell my children, you know, I I was ashamed before. I was embarrassed before. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I still don't have my birth certificate. Like right now as I'm talking to you, I just celebrated. I'm either 54, 55, or 56. So don't give up. And that was something that was really, really important. Again, when I was trying to just get my face out there, you know, so I can be recognized. Now it's going to heighten that level of awareness and drive additional hope. Well, I'm, I'm glad for your outtake because I cannot imagine to still be fighting <laughs> to get, you know, <laughs> what's yours. It's it's yours after yeah. and 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 we didn't we didn't say it for those of you who don't know. Um, Monique did locate her family, which it was amazing. Mm. <laughs> that reunion yeah. was amazing. <laughs> So if you if you want to see the quick snippet, I think it's about now. It's on it's on DC's USA Nine. So if you want to it see the yeah. emotional reunion, like <laughs> yeah, uh, so we're yeah, still waiting amazing. for because of COVID, the DNA, the final results from um, Ancestors.com. So they're backlog, and we're still waiting on those results. But we look like twins. <laughs> Yes, you do. Oh my God. I should have pulled that up. That is funny. <laughs> that is, I was like, because I think we talked around that time and I was like, oh my God, it's like twin <laughs> nation. <laughs> it is amazing. It's amazing. But anyway, okay. I want to go. But that is so awesome. I am so excited for you. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. you so know, much. We, I feel like your story should have been on Oprah, Ellen, everybody. Oh, some I'm Steve trying. Harvey, whoever, you know, it's God's just an time. amazing story. Yes, it is. Yes, it definitely is. And I always yeah. say that, you know, you just put uh, put it out. Yeah. Yeah. We had a million views. We, we had wow. a million views in that uh, just on that. So I'm looking at all the people that we were able to successfully reach before then. And when we looked at the numbers from all of the networks that actually re released it, we hit over a million people. Wow. Yeah. So that's God's goals, God's goals. That's all what I call them. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Okay. So Monique, I, I just think, I know this went quick. We'll have, to, <laughs> we'll have have you back another time. It's just so much, you know, to your, your whole story and everything that thank you me, are putting me. out in the thank world. You. And so, um, let did you want to discuss any of your uh, other projects you have uh, going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So I'm working with someone that's uh, currently out in uh, California. So 
like I said, I, you know, I, HBO, I'm excited, but I can't stop what my mission and plans are. So again, going from the book to the documentary to actually working on a movie. So we'll be pitching my story to like uh, Amazon Prime and Lulu. I mean, Lulu, I'm sorry. <laughs> and next year, right. <laughs> girl, there's so many to lose out here. So, you know, just again, and that's uh, uh, one of my projects. We're working on a second book because, I, you know, people were always asking me, When's the next book? When is, it was nothing that I, I was still working and developing. Mm -hmm. I was serving the community. Um, so th it, it really wasn't anything of substance that I would ask people to invest in. So now that all of this hope has now been polished off, <laughs> I'm so grateful now to be working on another project. So there's a total of three between HBO, the movie, and like the next book. And the next book, again, wow. you know, if I wanted to make sure that it has uh, solutions. What are, you know, solutions. It's not just about my story. It's about solutions. Like what what happened in my life, how it happened in my life, and how it, it can help someone else. You know, just to get through some of the processes that I have. So I am so so very. Um, I'm very proud of that. I just made the cover of Own It magazine, like Own It you magazine. Did. And wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I have I have to wait. I have to show that because that is oh yes. my God. Honey, that is fear. Yes. I, yes. I know that's not how you say the word, but it's <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's take the fear. center stage of your ad and oh. it, you know what? it was Beautiful. perfect. It's, it's it's called the take the center stage in your life, career and business. So when they reached out to me, yes. I'm like that is me, the longest living Jane Doe. I'm the answer. Mm. Yes, I'm going to take. So if, so if anyone can take control of their lives and be your wow. own catalyst and build on what you have, go for it. Just go for it. I, you know, everything. When I was eating oodles and noodles and it was 10 packs for a dollar, you couldn't tell me nothing. And on the night that my children did good and I bust out a pack of shrimp flavor. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> So again, you know, you have to find joy in your journey. That's where the pain is. You know, you're hurting. And, you know, so how do you find find joy yeah. in your journey? Absolutely. That's how, that's how you, you will make it. Yeah. 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 This, this has been, I, I'm loving this interview. Don't tell me about <laughs> it. I love all my interviews. But this one right here, right here, right here. <laughs> But yes, I, I appreciate you being on the show today. And for anyone that wants to reach out with Moni, we're just going to put her, her links up here and we'll make sure they're in the, uh, in the post for uh, today's live as well. So you guys can read. Wow. Look her. at you. Look at you. Everything <laughs> is known as Monique for the most part. <laughs> and you know, and 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 let me tell. Can I close out with this? What you just did, I don't have an identity. I don't know how old I am. I don't know what my real name is. But I am known. I am known as Monique. I am being the best me that I can be. That right there is any value that any individual can take away. Being the enjoying who you are, being the best that you can be being your best representation. You didn't put up my website, known as Monique, Instagram, known as Monique, Facebook, known as Monique. You know am I? She known. She known as Monique. <laughs> That's right. That's legacy living. That's legacy it is living. It is, right? Legacy living. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> I just, I so appreciate you being on the show today. You know, you Thank are welcome you. back you for any, 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 any time. Well, I'm a loyal, I'm a loyal listener now, girl. I saw, I saw <laughs> Miss Cherie Cofield and what you did with your first episode. Yay! <laughs> so I am a loyal listener, okay? <laughs> yes. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, so I, I just have really enjoyed this episode and Make sure you guys definitely check out um, known as Monique the website. Yeah. Check out all the other links we're going to be giving and yeah, get some money. get some of these. Get some of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look if you get if you look into that social the social experience here because <laughs> I I love seeing that documentary. But yes, you're going to need all the tissues that you can muster. <laughs> Bring them with you. Um, but yeah, check it out. So
so glad to have her on the show today. Um, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for being a part of Boss Radio Live. Until next time, uh, and always speaking of next time, we will have the amazing Miss uh, Mathina James Brightful coming up in just a couple of weeks on June 11th. She will be in the place. She is an inspiring speaker, teacher, author. Uh, she's co-founder of the Heal a Woman, the Heal a Nation movement and CEO of Stage Ready Speakers, which I have been blessed to be a part of myself. And so really, uh, be on that episode. That's going to, she's going to be dropping lots of nuggets, I'm sure. And it's going to be amazing. Uh, thank you guys again for joining me, Boss Radio Live with NJ. Uh, love you guys. And we will definitely, definitely see you on the next time. Uh, and you guys make sure again to look up Monique. There's that website for you one more time. Make sure you look her up uh, and see about that social experience. That um, uh, documentary is a must see and her book is a must read. So check that all out. Thank you guys again for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thank you.